So I'm basically creating this video to tell you not to follow this technique that is described in uh, Hashlips NFT uh, channel, which is create an NFT pre-sale smart contract. So what Hashlips is describing is, is, a, is a correct way to create whitelist address. But the drawback of this approach is that it will cost you a lot of gas fees. I know this from experience uh, because I helped someone uh, who was using this technique, uh, paper people, deploy their smart contract. And after the deployment, uh, they when they were adding the smart uh, when they were adding uh, the whitelist of addresses, it cost them about one Ethereum, and then it costed them uh, the uh, the people who were minting the contract a bit more. So this uh, this approach didn't work out really well for them. I can show you what what's, uh, what, what this approach is about. So this approach is talking about uh, creating like a whitelist address mapping. So in in, in the Hashlips video, if you go back, this is creating like a address public whitelisted error. So Hashlips is basically saying uh, he has got some examples of the contracts. You can look at that. Uh, he's as you can see address array when you store something in the smart contract when you store something in the memory you make things expensive uh, basically on the blockchain uh, efficiency counts because that is how you can reduce the gas fees so uh, again it uh, he'll then provide some functionalities like the, these guys have to like verify uh, like if person is in whitelist or not so like this condition require is this a whitelist person or not Second is add to whitelist function and remove a whitelist function. So that that's an approach. It's a uh, I mean the, the implementation are very similar. One is using a basic error, another is using like a, a mapping, uh, and both both approaches uh, cost a lot of gas. So instead, I would suggest using the Merkle tree algorithm. So Ellen has uh, posted this has written this really good uh, blog post. Uh, this blog post talks about uh, how how Merkle tree works like it has got leaf nodes parent nodes and root node uh, the, how is the root node generated uh, you can go and read about the whole uh, like whole concept I'll, I'll share the link uh, of this blog post in the video this guy is really amazing like do read this blog post it's, it's it has helped me understand the concepts as well but I, I came across this concept uh, in detail when I was doing a reverse engineering of crypto bets so who doesn't know about crypto bets this is uh, and an NFT project by Ozzy Osbourne. So in his contract, you see actual implementation of this Merkle tree algorithm. If you go uh, to this contract, you will see, uh, for example, one second, I'm, I'm just going to take you to the yeah. So this is a function which is a whitelist function. So you can call, uh, you can name the function anything. So over here, what uh, the crypto bets developer have developers have done is they have created a buy pre-sale function, which takes a signature. And then they use so I'm, I'm within the function body right now in the buy pre sale within that function they use the signature to basically check if the person who's trying to mint is a whitelist signer so instead of storing the whitelist addresses in the contract they are using a very efficient technique of just matching a signature and I think that there would be some more like efficient I don't know I don't know how to spell efficient apparently but what what this does is i'm just going to explain it to you so if you have got a list of whitelist addresses uh, as you can see on my screen in, uh, in alan's blog post you pass that, uh, those whitelist addresses uh, to uh, this function called merkle tree and the whole algorithm merkle tree algorithm is abstracted in that uh, in that function and then uh, you can get the root node root node is uh, the top hash and then you can get uh, the whole tree as well if you want uh, but you, you don't uh, need the whole tree at this uh, when you're interacting with the contract you just need a root node and you need the hex proof so using the hex proof and the root node in smart contract you implement this function which uh, basically takes the uh, signature which is generated over here it takes the signature it uh, you call the Merkle tree uh, Merkle proof dot verify function. So Merkle proof is uh, is basically if you look at uh, this in in detail like on line number six, they are importing an Open Zeppelin library. In Open Zeppelin library, there is a thing called Merkle proof dot solve. In there, this function uh, verify is implemented. So basically, uh, what 
Ellen is doing over here is he's calling Merkle proof dot verify. He's passing the value of uh, the signature into the contract and checking if it matches. That's it. So think of it this way. Rather than going to 1900 addresses, it is just doing a basic math. Uh, it is simple, simply cryptography where it is checking if the message that was sent is from the right source or not. If not, then it will say it's an invalid proof. So it's a very small calculation as compared to going to the list of 1900 addresses that are stored in the memory. So yeah, uh, this is this is the future. This is what everybody is doing now uh, when they are implementing their whitelist, uh, uh, whitelist addresses in the contract. So uh, th there are two bits of it. One is the JavaScript implementation, which goes onto your server. And another is your smart contract, which uses the Merkle proof dot sol uh, open Zeppelin library and uses the verify method from there. So if you are thinking of building uh, a smart contract with whitelist, go for this technique. Thank you.